We're now going to consider normal forces. So at the moment, this book is sitting on this table. So because it's at rest, we know that there's no unbalanced or net force acting on it. So we know that it's got a weight force pulling it down. But because there's no unbalanced force, there must be some other force pushing it up. So this force which is pushing it up is known as the normal reaction force. So the normal reaction force is always felt in a direction perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, when the book's just resting on this table, the normal reaction force is upwards and it is equal to mg in magnitude. So you can probably feel the normal reaction force now. If you're sitting or standing, the ground or the chair is pushing up on you and you can feel this and that is the normal reaction force. Now the normal reaction force isn't always just equal to something's weight. If I was to push down on this book with some force, let's call it force push, then you can see the free body diagram looks like this and the normal reaction force in this case is larger as the normal reaction force is equal to the weight force plus the push force as this book is still at rest and is still not moving and so there is still no unbalanced force acting on it. Now, an interesting case to consider is what happens in elevators. If you get in an elevator and stand on some scales, you'll actually see your weight change as the elevator accelerates up or accelerates downwards. So you've probably felt as you get into an elevator and it starts to accelerate down, you feel a little bit lighter. So let's have a look at why this is. It actually turns out to be because the normal reaction force on you is getting smaller and the normal reaction force is what you feel. Okay, so imagine this person in the lift standing on some scales. The lift is accelerating downwards at some rate A. Let's draw a free body diagram for our person standing in the lift. The forces acting on the person are the weight force pulling them down and the normal reaction force from the ground pushing them up. And we know that these two forces must add together to give the net force, which is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So in this case, the sum of the forces is equal to minus the mass times the acceleration. I'm using minus here because I'm taking downwards as the negative direction. And this is also equal to minus mg plus n. So n is positive in this case as it's an upwards force. It's pushing the person in the lift up. So rearranging this, we can see that the normal force is equal to mg minus ma or we can pull the m out and so the normal force is equal to m times g minus a. So this is smaller than what it would be in a stationary lift which is just equal to mg and this is why you feel lighter when the lift accelerates downwards. If the lift were to be accelerating upwards, so when it gets close to the bottom of the building, it needs to slow down. As it's slowing down, there is an upwards acceleration. So even though it's moving down, the acceleration is still up. In this case, we have that the net force is equal to MA and MA is now positive and the forces acting on the person are still minus MG plus N, though it's a different N. So now we can rearrange this case and we get N is equal to MG plus MA. So as the lift slows down and is moving downwards, you feel more reaction force from the floor. So it actually feels to you like you're a little bit heavier. So pay attention to this next time you get into an elevator.